Thanks very much, Bruce, for that uh, tremendous in-depth introduction to the encyclical. I'm sure we've got lots of questions, uh, further, more questions to ask you, but perhaps the best way we can um, move forward right now would be to ask Danusia Kaska uh, to share a bit about her own experience, uh, which has been working with the St. St. Paul Society, managing soup vans, taking visitors and volunteers to share the experience of homeless and hungry people. Uh, Danusia, would you be able to share with us how the encyclical Fratelli Tutti speaks to you, to your own experience, particularly in your role as a social justice animator in a big school? Yes, thank you very much, there, Stefan. And thank you, Bruce, for your inspiring and comprehensive lecture on Pope Francis' new encyclical Fratelli Tutti. And as you say, it is quite a heavy document and takes some time to digest the 95 pages, but very worthwhile to persevere and to meditate upon as it has great richness in its message. Just a few words about myself. Um, as Stefan mentioned, I have been involved with the St. Paul Society since I was a teenager. And I started up the Young Vinnies in the Western parts of Melbourne nearly 30 years ago. I volunteered for many years on different levels of the St. Paul Society, including eight years as the National Vice President of our National Council. I recently managed the soup and operations in Victoria and supported over 1500 volunteers who feed and support people experiencing homelessness across Victoria in nine different soup and operations. Now I'm working at the, as a Xavier College Social Justice Network Coordinator, and I manage our social justice events as well as coordinate the volunteers in our 12 partner agencies. I have just completed my course with Bruce Duncan at Yarra Theological Union on Action for a Fair World, and I've been greatly enriched by it, as well as learning about the wonderful works of Pope Francis, so I can't help but say how, how blessed I think we are to have such a strong and personable leader of our Catholic Church at this crucial moment and how much this encyclical Fratelli Tutti speaks personally to me. Not only is Pope Francis so in touch with the global issues causing extreme inequality, poverty, injustice and environmental issues, but he's also not afraid to speak out on them, especially to world leaders on an international level. I feel Pope Francis is the leader we need for our church today to speak so boldly and courageously with great conviction, challenging world leaders and each one of us to take action. So it's my privilege to speak today and thank you very much, Bruce. It's hard to come after your wonderful lecture. You, Bruce, you've highlighted some of the issues of injustice and inequality, many born from neoliberal economics and poor social policies and the crises our world faces, which Pope Francis has discussed in Fratelli Tutti. As you said, this encyclical brings together so many of his recent addresses and reinforces his messaging of the last few years. Although without the focus on climate change and sustainability, as in Laudato Si, and also a voice of women in the encyclical. This new encyclical, I believe, will speak to the hearts of young people as much as it will to other generations. As it is written with an authentic simplicity, which people can reflect, re re relate to from all ages and reflect upon, it isn't just an encyclical relying on lots of scientific and academic evidence, rather it has a personal intimate style, inviting one to engage with Pope Francis' words. It is grounded in the values especially important in today's younger generation. Fellowship, relationships, creating connections, building community, reaching out to those in need, making a difference, social justice, addressing inequality and unfair structures, religions working together for a united voice, being aware of the needs of the global community and globalization. These are some of the contemporary issues which I believe people today are very passionate about. Young people are more connected now than ever, and especially in a globalized world. Yet in our technological age, they are feeling more isolated and lonelier than ever, and they are yearning for a deeper connection and more meaningful relationships. And I witnessed this in the soup bands, where thousands of volunteers are drawn to come and feed the hungry and the homeless. They share in their pain and joys of the broken, the discard of the destitute. They have an encounter. I see with the students from schools engage with ministry to the elderly in nursing homes, tutoring refugees in English, serving meals to people experiencing homelessness. They choose the path of the Good Samaritan who chooses to see, judge and act. These people are yearning for a deeper intimate relationship than modern society can offer. And they find it among each other in the teams of volunteers and with the people they serve. And this is what Pope Francis is calling for, 
deeper relationships and connection with our neighbours and one another, especially the vulnerable people in need. But it doesn't just stop there. He challenges to us to go beyond our boundaries and shores and to view our relationship more globally and in the way we treat our nations, especially developing poorer countries. And Pope Francis calls this social friendship. Many people are drawn to volunteer especially overseas, especially in the youth, and they witness how the poorest of the poor live without their basic human rights met. They have an encounter, which is what Pope Francis promotes. And he, sa he says, life is about interaction. He says, when we have an encounter and view our neighbours as those also in other countries, especially the poorer countries, then we can't accept poverty and inequality, but we must act. And this is what often happens when these young ones have an overseas encounter or an immersion experience. They are often life-changing for them. To witness how the poorest of the poor live without the basic human rights met, such as lack of sufficient food, clean water, sanitation, a lack of opportunity for education and work, and lack of access to healthcare. And whilst not everyone can engage in such work, we can support programs aimed at addressing these issues and learn more about them. I also witness how younger people are trying to make a difference for the choices they make. Where to buy their clothes from? Are they ethically traded? and not made in a sweatshop. Also the diet they have. Being a vegetarian or vegan is very popular these days among young people in order to reduce the suffering of animals as well as their environmental footprint. Their lifestyles, the tra transport they choose, the work they're drawn to, the peers they choose to support their values. And Pope Francis is very urgent in his appeal in addressing this crisis we are experiencing in our globe. And he invites everyone, Christians and not Christians alike, to put this as an important priority in our lives especially in the midst of the global pandemic, where these issues have been exasperated. This encyclical shows us how we can apply his message to our lives here in Australia. And it all starts with relationships and being in fellowship with each other and the global community. He offers many recommendations. And whilst they are aimed at the higher level changes, we can all learn and participate by the choices we make on the leaders we vote for, the companies we choose to support, the places we buy our clothes from, the food we eat, the information we read and the issues we discuss among our family and our friends. Personally, since reading this encyclical and also since completing the course of Bruce Duncan this semester, I now often speak against neoliberal economics and the corruption, greed and power of many multinational companies to my family and friends. I share in my disappointment about the slow act to move in the right direction for climate change in Australia and I discern closely on the leaders I choose to represent me when I vote. Equality, social justice, connection, relationships, sustainability, fellowship, dialogue, empowerment. These are all things that Pope Francis speaks about and that we can aspire to in our world and hope for so that all of humanity can live their best life. That every person has dignity and can have the same opportunities in life and help everyone to reach their full potential. Pope Francis is asking us all to be advocates on these issues and to keep them as a priority. The church, both clergy and lay, need to lead by example on these issues and our schools should be the teachers of them. We need to embrace fatality and be part of making it a living document where there are actions taken and changes made so that we do see our global community the same as our own family. Pope Francis says we all have a role to play to rediscover our sense of ourselves as one global human family and then to build a new society out of this COVID-19 pandemic. And this starts in the home with learning about the values that the Good Samaritan displays, and then taking this to the global scale, where we invite all countries to have a voice at the table in making decisions. Thanks very much, Danusia, for that. Uh, Bruce, would you like to respond to Danusia at all? We've got about three minutes left of our time slot. Uh, and just to conclude. Uh, yes, thank you very much, Danusia. Uh, what, what I really like about your um, uh, your presentation is that you have such a, a long experience, such a uh, intense experience really over many years of uh, working with people on the ground uh, and uh, understanding the skills of relating uh, of, and, uh, and I've seen uh, you in various places where you have a, have a great gift of being able to communicate and personally with people and uh, to uh, even people in, in uh, very difficult circumstances. 